Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. I got a bunch of DC updates for you today as we head into the weekend. Could possibly be an exciting weekend for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Just saying, that's what it sounds like it's going to be. But before all that, I have to thank my newest member of the Ping Pong Flick Show. Thank you so much to Xavier Park for joining them as a member of the Ping Pong Flick Show. I also have to join, thank the rest of the Ping Pong Flick Show members. You guys, guys and girls are the lifeline of the Ping Pong Flick Show. I hope you enjoyed the exclusive access video so far. There's another one for this weekend that will come up uh, on Sunday or Monday for some of you international people. And uh, like I said, once we reach 100 members, uh, we will definitely get a random prize drawing for that DC content. In fact, this weekend's exclusive access video will show you only to the members what that DC merchandise that I'm going to be sending out to you as well. But thank you so much to all the subscribers that have subscribed in and have watched daily for DC content. Now, on with the show. The first topic of the day is, is there a new Superman game? Please tell me, yes, this is coming from Heroic Hollywood. Apparently, a Gotham Knights developer rumored to be working on a Superman game. How I've always wanted this. How I've I've always wanted this. Okay, let's read this article together. Gotham Knights and Batman Arkham Origins developer Warner Brothers Montreal is now speculated to be working on a Superman video game due to a recent job listing. After years of speculation from fans on the projects Warner Brothers Montreal and Rockstar were developing, DC Fandom finally revealed both of their next games, Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. But we know Warner Brothers Montreal is working on another AAA game, and a recent job listing seems to indicate that it could be centered on Superman. Really? The Arkham Channel found that Warner Brothers Montreal's job listings revealed the studio is working on a third-person open-world action game that involves a new IP AAA title. If the studio was working on our Superman project, this could be it. However, even if it was a Superman game, chances are it won't be revealed for a while. Wait a minute, that doesn't really say it's a Superman game. All it says is a third-person open-world action game IP AAA title. There could be anything. There could be another Batman game. That's a AAA title. That's a DC IP. It could be Harry Potter. Like, seriously, that doesn't really say much. So this is kind of a far reach, but... If there's there's been rumors about Superman games for a long time, and I'm really ready for that one Superman game already. The last Superman game I've played, uh, aside from Injustice, uh, you know, the you know a real Superman centric game was Superman Returns on the Xbox, and that thing was cool. I mean, yeah, the the story sucked and some of the gameplay elements sucked, but the 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 part that really you know really I really liked was being Superman flying through Metropolis and you're able to throw on at that time because only Superman Returns came out the John Williams score on it and you go you know it was awesome it was awesome and I just want to see that back with like a real a good game you know like if they could do that I mean either Rocksteady or Warner Brothers Montreal I would definitely want a Superman game. Heck, maybe there will be a little element within the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League where you can actually play as Superman just for a little bit, just just a tiny little bit, just to satisfy our need for a Superman game would be nice. But it could. I mean, it could be a third person. That sounds awesome. If it's a Superman game, third person open world action game, I would definitely, definitely want to check that out. So hoping it is crossing my fingers, but really that doesn't really says much, say much that it is truly a Superman game. But we'll see. You know, will we will we shall see. All right, now on to the movies. The first movie topic I'm going to talk about today is Black Adam. Black Adam casting call for finally. For Doctor Fate. Now we talked about yesterday. I think it was yesterday or the day before, where it was going. They were looking for Cyclone. Well, now they are looking for Doctor Fate. Doctor Fate power set in Black Adam revealed, and the production is looking for a Sam Rockwell 
type to play him. This is coming, again, from the Illuminati that as the casting continues for Black Adam, we have new information for the live action direction of Dr. Fate. Black Adam has been slowly but surely filling out its cast over the past few months. Today, they, uh, the Illuminati are proud to shed some light on the search for Dr. Fate, who will make his silver screen debut in Black Adam. While they, they want an official casting announcement for the DC Universe, Source of Supreme, patience is a virtue. We need hold fast to that virtue for a while longer as the search for the perfect actor is still underway. That being said, through the analysis of new casting information available to the Luminarity, we can begin to develop to help you narrow your fan casts down. The casting team of Black Adam is currently searching for a male in their 30s to play Dr. Fate, Kent Nelson. He is described as a kind, academic, while in form of Kent Nelson and a terrifying force of nature who sounds and acts totally different. Okay, it looks like the relationship between Dr. Faye and Nelson is likened to Jacob and Hyde, which is, you know, pretty much true, and details regarding his power set were revealed. The DCEU version of Dr. Fate will possess powerful telepathic and telekinetic abilities as well as the power to slow time and alter reality itself. Additionally, a well-known actor who is considered to be a prototype of reference is Sam Rockwell. Wow. That's, you know, I actually like Sam Rockwell. You know, I don't think they did him real justice as uh, Justin Hammer in the MCU. So why don't you come on over uh, and be in the DCU? I would, I, I really like Sam Rockwell. If they're going to look for a Sam Rockwell type, just cast Sam Rockwell. Just like the three sisters. You got a certain type. Just try to cast one. And I don't I think they probably will, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. This does not mean that Warner Bros. is looking to cast Sam Rockwell as Kent Nelson. Interestingly, Rockwell is 51, meaning he is a bit too old to be actually be considered for the role himself, at least according to the current search parameters, because they're looking for 30s. What it does mean is that the student wants to cast someone who can handle both serious and comedic roles with skill, and they want someone with a relatively high level of charisma. This information also indicates that they are likely going to cast a Caucasian to play Kent Nelson, and this actor will likely voice Nelson as uh, Dr. Fate as well. So, and they have a little bit of information about, a little bit more about that, which uh, will be in the article in the description below. But I am... I am truly excited uh, to really know who Dr. Fate's going to be. This is huge. The DCEU's first Dr. Fate is going to be on screen, and they are looking to cast him right now. This, is, uh, this, is, this has got to be huge, right? Just like, oh, to me, in any case, like Hawkman. Like this, the first DCEU Hawkman has been cast. Is that not awesome i mean to me it is maybe not to a lot of people but to me it is and to have a dr fate which is like one of the biggest characters in dc to actually be cast in a you know live action of course I've, we've seen cw and everything but actually in a, a theatrical sense the dceu we're gonna have dr fate i'm excited i'm excited about this this is cool and you know what if they could find a way to Come on, like they Hollywood magic makes Sam Rockwell a little bit younger. I get it. There's probably a lot of Caucasian people out there that can probably do the role, but you got me sold on Sam Rockwell. And I'm like, okay, let's have him dance into no, he's not gonna do that. But uh, I, I think he'd be a really good um, one for that. I was even like thinking, like maybe like Daniel Craig or something, but uh. I'm really intrigued by Dr. I really want to see who's going to cast him, who's who they're going to cast as Dr. Fate, and I hope we find out really soon. All right. Next on the list of DC films is that the Suicide Squad Empire Magazine are released their covers. There's two covers, um, and I'll share it with you here. This is the first cover. This is the one for subscribers only, and it has, you know, a little bit. It has James Gunn on it. Let me take this off so you can see it. Uh, James Gunn's over here. They're all smiling and stuff. Um, and then you also have the regular uh, cover that they're not smiling and stuff. They're all serious. They're being on the Suicide Squad. Uh, you got all the characters as well. Pretty much the same, except they're smiling and they're not. And there's no James Gunn in this one. But you do see everybody here. You see Ratcatcher, Rick Flag. Yes, that's King Shark. Um, 
And I get that they're probably going to go with the more Harley Quinn animated King Shark rather than the the scary King Shark. Because, you know, honestly, I'm watching Flash right now and I'm in season two and, and I've seen the episode with King Shark in it. I I I really think that is like that's my ideal king shark that big bulky scary looking king shark. This one ain't scary and big and bulky. It looks you know he, he's yeah he's the cartoony looking one. Probably have some I don't know if he's gonna talk. I'm just gonna say I'm a shark. I'm king shark. Is that all you're gonna do? But definitely it's a different take on that character. Uh, essentially yes. Um, I prefer the CW one, but I got to be fair. I have not seen this movie. Of course, no one has. And I'm going to make my fair judgment in terms of the character uh, from within the context of the film. So with that being said, I'm excited. I want to see what this film is. I want to see all the characters. I want to see uh, who they go up against, although we've already had teases of who it goes against. Uh, and, and the story, and who's going to live, who's going to die. The action in the that behind the scenes look looked awesome. I wanted to see an actual trailer, a story trailer about this, uh, and um, yeah, can't wait to see this in hopefully in theaters if it does a release. Um, like I said, hey, a lot of people are not going to be excited for this movie, and I can already see it. But there's also another huge group that is. So, but like this is DC man, and I'm ready and willing to take. Uh, to go deep into the Suicide Squad. But still, release that David Ayer Suicide Squad, though. I still want to see that. All right. The next thing is HBO Max Film Shakeup. This is a Variety article came up. Toby Emmerich still in power? What? HBO Max Film Shakeup. Toby Emmerich consolidates power. Two executives depart. This caused a big uproar today. In, in fact, I even tweeted out a Brian Cranston little gift went, what the fuck? you know, it's like, like I was, I, I was livid for, for a, a few minutes. I had to talk to a few people, talk to Stephen Colbert, talk, uh, talk to Shiraz, you know, just, just, just want to get a feel of what everybody, how everybody's reading into this a little bit. Um, and I, I want to, you know, kind of see, is this a bad news or good news? But I'll read the part that would, you know, uh, the part that people are talking about right now. So HBO Max film shakeup, blah, blah, blah. Feature film programming for streaming service HBO Max has undergone a restructure as two executives shuffle out of the group and green light power now falls exclusively under studio chief Toby Emmerich. In February, Warner Media announced the creation of Warner Max, a streaming film label that would create movies exclusively for the service, control of which has to be shared by Warner Brother Pictures Group Chairman Emmerich and HBO Max Chief Content Officer Kevin Riley. In a new arrangement announced Friday, Emmerich has been given full control of original films and will oversee rollout to either theatrical releases or streaming premieres. Warner Media's executive vice president of original films, Jesse Henderson, has chosen to depart the company. Nikki Ramey, senior uh, vice president of original feature films at HBO Max, is headed to Warner Label, New Line Cinema. She'll report to New Line president and chief, uh, blah, blah, blah. Emmerich will continue to work with HBO programming president Casey Bloys on overall platform goals with an infinite emphasis on premium quality. Original film production continues to be led by Courtney Valenti, Brenner, DC Films head Walter Hamada. The portfolio remains under purview of Warner Brothers chairman and CEO and Sarnoff. Okay, here we go. So currently in production for HBO Max is no sudden, uh, uh, direct the snow sudden move directed by Steven Soderbergh. So already there, there are already movies that are going thrown onto HBO Max. So let's let's break this down a little bit. Um, now, at first, I was when I saw that headline. Of course, it screams like, "Oh my God! Why are you giving this guy power? He he split the shares of Joker." Um, and, and recently, I learned that he 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 greenlit Goldfinch, which did absolutely terrible in the box office um you know all these little things that have happened why are they still keeping this guy around uh 
Well, well, speaking to some uh, individuals, and also if you listen to the uh, Dave the Film Junkies vodka stream, this is them consolidating or or having Tommy Emrick get put more on his plate without actually promoting him at all. They're making him work harder because they're consolidating power. The the Warner Brothers side is losing its power. It's losing its shares. As you know, theaters are not, you know, you know, they're not putting movies out in theaters. They're losing market share in that respect. HBO Max, even though it's slow, percentages have gone up. Everything has gone up. Everything, everybody's moving to streaming service. Disney is doing that same thing. They're putting a lot of investment in the streaming service, especially a company like AT&T and Warner Media, who are putting every effort, effort in order to get that HBO Max to be its star power. It, this is them. This is their ship, right? But the Warner Brothers ship side, it's not doing so well. So what do you do with all these executives that are being paid right now? Well... You tell them you got to work harder. You got to show what you can do because you're not performing over on Warner Brothers. So here's what you can do. This is what you can you you take full control of what to green light, what to do uh, with over on you know. And he's not even in HBO Max apparently. He's just still at Warner Brothers, but he's deciding what goes movies to go theatrical, what goes to you know HBO Max, but working alongside someone over on HBO. He's not doing that himself. Huh. So I I don't know the theatrical business and how it does like that, but when explained to me, I can only think of my own industry where a giant corporation takes over a smaller company and let Certain executives on the smaller company perform until they find a better solution because they are that's what they do, and then later on they just can them. Or that executive decides that I don't want to do all this work with the same pay without promoting, and they squeeze them out. So it looks like this is Toby Emmerich's last chance to perform while being under supervision from Warner Media. If that's the case, this is the you know last part. This is he's he's the captain of his uh, what Steven said, a sinking ship, which is Warner Brother Films. That's interesting. So I'm not you know I, I'm very I'm trying to be very optimistic about it. The best thing on this thing uh, in terms of Zack Snyder and the uh, Snyderverse is that Zack Snyder's Just League is a series. It's a mini series. In this article, it says it will touch, he will have, you know, control over films. So this will probably have no effect on Zack Snyder's Just League at all because it's considered a miniseries. It's over on HBO Max. It's under uh, uh, Warner Max uh, guidance. Toby Emmerich will probably be on over on the Warner Brothers side and just, you know, whatever this made over there, just like the the witches movie, Robert Zemeckis witches movie, or the Steven Soderbergh No Sudden Move movie, that's where he'd be like, well, this is going to theaters or this is going to HBO Max. That kind of like cardstock moving guy in the in in that role in any case. So when you read it like that way, it does sound good. It does sound like he's being slowly pushed out uh slowly um you know they're consolidating his control and he's one of the one of the many execs that are left standing so we'll see how this develops as we go on but i gotta say from that initial report uh the initial reaction to that and to what i've learned so far and how it works i feel a lot better now i really do i feel a lot better now so, since we're talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League, something that Toby Emmerich cannot touch at all, <laughs> is Joe Manganiello, 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 is confirmed for Zack Snyder's Justice League additional photography. This is an exclusive from a Collider. There's nothing much on here than what we've already talked about yesterday in terms of that Twitch uh, stream. You see his picture with the white hair and things like that. But... 
They've exclusively learned, Collider, that he will reprise his role as Deathstroke uh, for Zack Snyder's Justice League. He said, they, and it, this only this part right here, that our source explicitly explicitly said that Manganiello will be returning to the set for additional shooting. That's it. That's all that is, is needed from this article, other than what I've already told you yesterday about seeing that he looks very Deathstroke-like. That's it. So... There is a source. The rap also contributed and said, yes, their source also says that Joe Manganiello is returning as Deathstroke for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, what is that role? I've always thought, uh, like I said yesterday, that uh, this could either be possibly him breaking Luther out if they're going to film that or the nightmare scenario because you you got Ben Affleck as Batman. You got Well, you got Batman. You got Mara. You got uh, Cyborg, and also confirmed you've got Joker, and maybe even Harley Quinn as well. Now you got Deathstroke. That sounds like the last team of members fighting against Darkseid or Evil Superman in the nightmare future. At least that's that how it sounds to me. This is my theory in any case. It could be anything. You could just be breaking out of prison. I don't know. But I think... Um, the Zack Snyder's Justice League is going to be a, a, a different animal. It already is. And it's going to be something that we've never even thought of. So I'm totally excited. And as we head into this weekend, what could possibly be an awesome Zack Snyder's Justice League weekend, I don't know what's going to happen. I honestly don't. Uh, there's been rumors that Zack Snyder is going to post something on Vero. I don't know. Uh, I cannot wait. I can't wait to wake up in the morning. And everybody's been freaking out for over three hours already because I'm I'm like three hours behind Pacific Standard Time, but I I'm really truly am I'm going to be staying home, and I'm going to be as some doing some breaking videos if something like that happens. Cross my fingers. I don't know if I can sleep, but hopefully hopefully it comes out when I'm already awake and ready to roll. So that's awesome. All right, last fun one. Just a, just a fun one. Just it's really it's just really fun. Happy birthday to Ryan Reynolds. Um, we've been talking about Ryan Reynolds whether he's going to be back as Green Lantern for either Green Lantern, I don't know, Core or Zack Snyder's Justice League, or or is he just going to be Deadpool? Right. Well, this little nugget came today where fandom get fandom <laughs> uh, posted a happy birthday, Ryan Reynolds. May most of your wishes come true. And it's a Zack Snyder's Justice League poster. And they put Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern right behind a Ben Affleck. And look who liked it. Ryan Reynolds. Now, granted, he also liked a ton of Deadpool stuff. Instagram's filled with Deadpool stuff and some Green Lantern stuff. So it's no big deal at all. But I thought that was kind of fun uh, to say, yes, happy birthday to Ryan Reynolds. I didn't mind you as Green Lantern in the 2011 Green Lantern. If this is what you want, if you truly want to be back as Green Lantern, then uh, good luck to you. And hopefully you come back as either Green Lantern in a, you know, even another movie. A movie or show up on Green Lantern Corps or show up Zack Snyder's Justice League. I don't know. I don't care. But um, it would be a cool redemption, I think, uh, if he wanted to do that. Kind of like how he wanted to redeem himself as Deadpool, and he did awesomely. And I, I'm really looking for Deadpool 3. Please, Kevin Feige, please do the let him do the rated R, whatever, how rated R he wants Deadpool. Let him do it. It's, it's worked two movies already. Let him do the third one the way he wants. Um, and if he wants to be Green Lantern, let him be Green Lantern as well. So that would be pretty awesome. Um, like, I, I don't know what's going to happen this weekend, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I think you should be as well. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you absolutely love this daily dose of DC content in the movies, shows, and video games, please click the like button. Hit that subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Keep this hot dog light on. And I'll see you next time.